A Continuation of One Direction Slave by Larry is what we aim for. Liam's POV. When I saw Niall, my heart broke. He looked so helpless under the bastard's grip. I came prepared for danger. I took out the small hammer and I threw it at the bastard's head. His lip grip loosens on Niall and he falls to the ground, the bloke. Niall falls forward and I go and catch him. Niall, it's okay, you're going to be alright, I say. Liam, L- Liam, is that is that you? He asks weakly. Yes, Ni, nee, it's me. Don't worry, I called the lads at 911. They're coming. We need to get you to the hospital, I say. I brush my hand through his hair and try to calm him while I look for a car with enough petrol. Stay with me, Niall, please, I say. C- come closer, he says weakly. I lean close to him and he kisses me softly. What, what am I doing? He's dating Zane. I can't like him again. I can't. The ambulance gets here and Niall passes out. I got into the ambulance with Niall as they were trying to get him unconscious again. Why did we let Niall live, leave? I made sure the hospital got the guys and Alice so they'd make sure at the hospital. Niall looked pale. The lad was pale. He was not looking good. The doctors looked over and got concerned. Is he going to be okay? I ask. Alice's POV. When we got to the call about Niall, we raced to the hospital as fast as possible. We had to take the limo because someone took the BMW, which we're assuming was Zane. We still don't know where he is. We've tried calling him, but there's no answer. We get to the hospital and rush to the desk. The lady at the desk almost has a heart attack when she sees the boys. Yo, yo. You're One Direction. Um, um, how may I help you? She says. We're here to see our lad Niall. Harry states. Y- yes, yes, of course, Niall Horan. R- room E15, go on past, she says. We knock on the door for room E15 and Liam lets us in. We all take a seat and stay silent for a li- moment. So, Liam, how is he? I ask. He's beaten up pretty bad. The doc says he got a concussion, but other than that, the lad's fine. Liam said with a sad smile. Do you know where Zane is? I thought he'd be the first one up here. Hey, he, here's the thing about that, Louis states. We, we have no idea where he is. We went off looking for Niall an hour after you did, I say. Did you try calling him? Liam asks. Y- yeah, just go straight to voicemail that bloke, Harry says. I'm sure he'll be here soon. How long will Niall will now be asleep? I ask. The doctor said he should be awake soon, but even when he does wake up, we can't overwhelm him. He needs the rest and recovery time, Liam says. Did you tell Simon? Harry asks. Ye. Yeah. But we don't go back on tour for a couple of months and now should be recovered in a few days so it's not a big deal, lad. I assure his mum that he's going to be fun and that she's happy to hear that. Very jolly, Liam says. Once again, guys, elephant in the room, I say and clear my throat. How did Niall get like this? Liam looks awkwardly in the other direction. <clears throat> I'm talking to you. I say, snapping my fingers at him. He, the lad was almost raped, but I came just in time. I recognize the man who tried to rape him, Liam says. Well, who is he? I ask. Harry's POV. Well, who is he? Alice asks. Poor Liam looks a mess, the lad. I wonder what's so hard for him to say. Who could it be? We know tons of people, but Alice doesn't know. No one. It was. Liam starts. Suddenly the door arms open and the dust comes in. Hello, boys. Ma'am, I just came in to check on Niall. She says. Has he woken up yet? 
No, not yet. Liam says, the lad says. Well, that's completely normal. I'll be back to check on him in a bit. She says, the lad w- lady walks out in the door. Well, gee, thanks for coming and stating the obvious. Takes a real doctor degree to do that, I say. I know it's probably not the best time for jokes, but I'm trying to lighten the mood. Liam looks a wreck, the lad, and Alice looks like she might have thrown up. Louis in the sleep in the ball and chair. It looks real adorable. He's so cute. As you were saying, Liam, Alice says, It it was your dad. Liam says bluntly, My, my dad? No way. He lives in New York. She, the last says, I saw him with my own two eyes. I think he's in jail now. I knocked him unconscious with a hammer. My lad Liam says, He says it like a stranger. This is her dad. Liam's a very good person in these situations, but he's a mess and we're going down now. Right now, we all go down. Oh, oh my god. Alice cups her face around her mouth and steps out of the hospital room. I see tears running down her face before she steps out. The door shuts quietly. Liam. You should have been more gentle about that, lass. I say. You weren't there, Harry. You didn't see Niall's face. You didn't hear Niall's screams. I hate that bloke. I wouldn't care if he was Jesus himself. He hurt my lad, so I hurt him. Liam said. The moment after he says that, I know for sure that Liam's broken. He loves now, but now loves Zane. I wish I could do something, see Liam that this is the one here holding hands and praying with him to be okay. Zane's nowhere to be found. I'm sorry, Liam. You're right, my lad. I'm sure I would have done the same exact thing any of us lads would have for now, but we know now that would do the same for us. And when we assume now, we should be sure to find out, Liam Payne. I put my hand on his shoulder. You're the bravest, most loyal lad I know, and I say plug and then the pod turned into a hug. I feel his silent sobs on my shoulder. It's going to be okay, Liam. The important thing is that now is here now and safe. Suddenly, the door slams open. It's Alice. Guys, it's Zane. Come quick, she says. Someone needs to stay here with now, I yell. Lewis jerks awake. I'll stay, Liam says. Come on, Lou, hurry, it's Zane, I say. Lou and I run to follow back in the me, Alice. We see doctors and nurses pushing a gurney. The person in the gurney is Zane. The my lad Zane, there's blanket on him and excuse except his hair, which is a mess. Definitely not how I wanted to go down. Louis falls to the floor crying. Alice chases and screaming something I can't see and muck it out. I'm standing here frozen. Everything is slow motion. There's ring in my ears. Zane's put in the same room as now after his surgery. We requested it and the little bit wanted. The doctor comes in so solemn expression on his face. So is he going to wake up, doc? I ask. The doctor gave me a pain look. I drop to my knees in complete and utter sorrow. Louis POV. There, there's not one word to describe how I felt after the news from the doctor. I can still hear them floating around in my brain. We don't know when Zane will wake up. Or if he will ever wake up. He's in a coma. And because he's in a coma, he might never wake up. So he just lays there lifeless. He looks so peaceful. We found out that Zane was in a gruesome car accident. We hadn't even known our best mate was in our car for 30 minutes before someone called 911. We had to break the news to his mother. She sobbed. She sobbed on the phone. She can't afford to fly here and miss work so much. We have to update everybody. She will have to fly down if we have to unplug Zane. I notice Niall's eyelids slowly opening. No one wants to break the news to Niall, but we have to. Hey Niall, how you feeling? Harry asks. Better. My head just hurts. He says. Yeah, you have a concussion, mate. Liam says. So where's Zane? Now ask weakly. 
We have a cut in between Nile and Zane, so Nile wouldn't be so startled. H here's the thing now, I start. No, don't tell me. He's not here, I he just wouldn't not to come. Nal says. He's here, lad. Harry says. There, there was an accident, lad, I say. What kind of accident? Zane is okay, right? Nal asks. His eyes plead for an answer that we can't give him. I move the curtain. He's, he's just sleeping, right? Nal asks. No, he's in a coma, Liam says. No, Nal yells. Stop lying, you guys, it's not funny. We, we wish we were lying, I say. We all need to feel strong for Nile and Zane. No, Nile screams and cries out for Zane. He tries to get up, but we have to hold him down. A nurse comes in and gives him a shot to make him sleep. I watch his body slowly goes limp and his eyes close. It's the weakest and smallest I've ever seen now. And that alone kills me and kills us in inside. I walk over next to Zane. They say when someone comes in a coma, they can hear you. Please wake up, Zane. We need you here. To be continued.